Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Bootstrap 5 full tutorial series. In today's episode, we are going to learn a very very important and I would say top rated uh, functionality and feature of any web application which is forms. Forms are an integral part to any web application. Some of the common examples of forms can be contact us page or creating new resource that can be anything right can be creating a new contact lead opportunity code invoice etc etc form consists of various components right uh, it can have a text box text area check box input radio select drop down and various um, input mechanism through forms we will collect the information from the user right it's a it's kind of an interactive way in which we can engage our end users in providing us the inputs so let's get started and learn how bootstrap forms can be used in creating those forms and what are the different components that we can use this is part 20 of the bootstrap 5 full tutorial playlist make sure you check them out I'm planning around 40 tutorials for you which includes tutorials and live examples so so far we have covered all these um, topics that are on your screen right now and currently we are on episode number 20 which is about bootstrap forms so some of the important classes that uh, utility classes that bootstrap provides for forms is form label which can be used to create a label for the form then to to add an input element to it we'll use form control right and there can be input groups input file uploads input ranges and validations so we'll see one by one now with a live example and hands-on practical example during the course of this if you have any doubts just drop them in the comment section and I'll be happy to help you all right so I'm opening this code that I have that if you see this is the same code which we have done as part of our live project so if I just refresh and click on add new contact there's a dummy model nothing this it's empty there is nothing in it yet and we will add the forms inside our model window right you can add input forms to anywhere in your screen right you can add it in the main content or in your model window anywhere you can add that right so that being said um, the documentation that you should refer is go to docs then search for forms and this is the details that it will show us right so I'm going to show you some basic ones how to create and then I'll show you how to use the documentation to speed up your process all right so let's go to the bootstrap model it's empty so first I'm going to create a div then I'm going to put a label right and I'm going to give a class right so this is input label right so I'll say username and then we will actually give a input control and we'll say form control right and we'll give this input and say this is my form control let's refresh and see this so it says username and you see this yellow uh, blue color border which means it's taking it as a input control right now similarly you can give the form control to any um, uh, any particular let's say this is for this div so I'm going to create a new one and take it here okay so here I'm going to say enter comments right and now I'm going to make a text area right so these input fields right can have multiple things like which is typical of your HTML attributes like enter username I can also have a placeholder say enter comments and again refresh and you would see enter comments enter so this is by default if you see this is taking 100% of the width of that particular div right so we have learned about grid right so you can also mention those here so if you want to say specify grid layout you can say it should occupy column 6 right so it will be only half that width you see here so that way you can also apply your grid layout along with it to the styling how you want to do it is up to you so I'll be show you an example of how you can beautifully design 
so you can say this is one row right this is a row so now I have one row and two columns each consisting of so this now I'm going to change it to first name this I'm going to change it to last name right so now what we have done we have added two fields in the same row first name last name and we have some comments right alright so we can also apply some typography here and we can say uh, the padding should be say 2 right so that's the utility so now you see it has padding 2 similarly I can say here and say class padding 2 so now they'll be much better aligned right so you see now the slowly the form is shaping up beautifully and the way we want it let's go ahead and now check out this was about input type equal to text and text area right now similarly we can add other components like checkbox radio button so I'm not going to start uh, typing each one instead I'm going to show you how to use it utilize quickly so go to documentation check click on checkbox and radio these are same again so the only difference here would be this would use form check right and this would be form check input form check label so copy that and just paste it inside this div and there you go so <coughs> alright so now we have a default checkbox right now you can add other attributes to it like say if you want to add this particular input and make it disabled right or you can say checked and disabled both so see now it's by default checked and disabled so you can use that if you don't want it disabled by default you want it checked you want it checked right so this was about checkbox similarly you copy this again now we are going to throw in through two radio buttons okay so similarly uh, it's the same concept right in radio uh, in checkbox the thing is you can use multiple selects right so let me show you that also quickly so whenever we say a checkbox we can have multiple selection and radio button we will have only one right so I can select these two whereas with radio it's always one right so now let me show you that also quickly so there are different uh, no the only thing that separates a radio button and a checkbox is the name okay now let me show you that so if you see here this name and this name has to be same right so that's why it will only select one let me show you that in action so see now you have radio button now you see it is switching alternating between these two whereas checkbox can do multiple select right and it is switching alternate because this name is same now I'm going to change the name to something else okay now let's see this and now it is selecting both because the names are not similar they are not same they are different so it is thinking there are two different radio buttons whereas it's only one so make sure that this is a common mistake most developers do they give different names and they see that both radio buttons are getting selected alright so we covered text input we covered text select text area we saw checkboxes radio button now let me also show you um, how there are different variations of checkboxes that you can use like um, if you want to use intermediate state right like three states it's either true or false or you can have an intermediate step again that depends upon how you want to use it in your application you can provide that also now let me show you range now range is nothing but you can drag and drop the uh, selector the range and when you select it it would give you the value of that particular element now we can always set the max and the min range right so these are usually used um, when you are trying to do something like select age right or select your age or select uh, the amount that you are looking for what's your maximum budget you can give that and it's usually a JavaScript kind of a interaction 
um, that you want to put in. So let me put it here and let's drop it here. Let's close it here. All right. So that's how we can add it to the, I would say, user experience. Uh, it's a new control. Um, certainly, um, if you want to use it, you can use it like a drag and on drag what has to do on start of the drag what should happen. Um, so you can add all of that interactivity to your uh, application. Alternatively, you can use a drop down and say select minimum and maximum range. Uh, that is all user experience driven. So this is an example of range. All right. <clears throat> and then uh, any other interesting thing that has come up recently with user experience is um, the input groups, right? So what is an input group? Input, if you see here, right, there is no at the rate or there is no, let's say you are trying to enter a value of um, say currency, right? And you want to show a currency, which currency it belongs. So that to, that's where input grouping comes into picture, right? Uh, let me show you an example. Go to documentation, pick it up. So you see here one of the example which says at the rate username, or you can see dollar, the text box and then something, right? So this is a group of three elements. There is a symbol, there is an input, and there is again a label, right? So you can group one or two at the end at the starting or at the end or you can use at start and at the end also right so let me show you that example let's copy this div and let's go here let's fork this and add one more and copy this again go here all right so if you see there is an input hyphen group and here we are putting three elements, right? So under input group, whatever you put, it would appear it in single line, right? So here we are saying input group text. This is your text that you want to display. It can be anything. It can be INR, it can be USD, whatever value you want to display, right? So I am showing it INR. Now you can have it only one like this. This is also fine at the beginning or you can have it only at the end this is also fine at the end right or now the question sometimes can I have two right something like this right so you can have more than one as as long as uh, you know um, say you are showing something like USD and say dollars right so as long as it fits your use case or if it's your requirement, you can add anything, any number of grouping. It can be at the beginning, it can be at the end. Now this is very useful again to improve your user experience, right? So give it a shot, give it a try. Uh, last, I'll cover validation and yet a very important one. So if you see, if you re delete and try to submit form, it shows this kind of validation. Usually we will do all of this in JavaScript, right? Or in modern frameworks like Angular, React, Vue. Uh, it provides a lot of utilities which we can easily achieve this, right? Uh, like if uh, based on a certain condition, you can make it true or false, right? So just copy. Now this is nothing but add one more field to it. That's all, okay? So what we are doing here is nothing but we are telling that if it's available, show like this right so looks good otherwise there is a problem right so what we are going to do so let's copy this um, let's say we'll copy this div and let's go to the form right and then copy it here and paste it go back Right. So now you see if you delete, it won't do anything because there it is on submit. So I'm going to move that functionality now. So if you see here, they're adding it and showing it for each of it. Right. So whether it is true or false, usually you will not. If you want to do it in vanilla JavaScript, you can do that. But think of it this as a utility class. Right. Um, so what I'm going to show is I'm going to show this as required 
and then I'm going to put it as display so for that I'm going to say invalid feedback so it should show you the error right okay let me correct this here uh, validation so yeah it's actually uh, JavaScript driven probably I'll cover this when I do with angular um, will uh, will incorporate these into our uh, application and we can just show them directly right uh, because the by default they are hidden so if you see in the code I will inspect element and there is a class here which says invalid display none so if I just open it it looks like this right so you can show those errors and just say uh, true or false and make it look all right so just assuming that you have done some uh, logic at here in your JavaScript and there is an error so how do you show it you show it like this right you edit basically you basically flip the uh, toggle with between display none and display block so we'll learn about it more when we do integration with JavaScript and with angular um, I think that's where it would be much clearer but understand that there are different uh, validations that you can perform uh, you can have different types like you can show this icon you can show border you can show message you can uh, make the text color red right so there are so many things that you can incorporate uh, just to show that it's um, not correct so alternatively you can also show it like text red in the label so just put text red so this is another way of showing that there is an error right uh, again so this um, you can put it here and so let's see that oh sorry not red uh, it's text danger right okay so like this like it's required it's empty so you can make the label as red or the show some message uh, you can use an input group uh, which is of red color uh, you can show that as well so like how we have learned to show this icon here so there are different use cases that you can incorporate and show them accordingly right all right so that brings us to the end of this particular episode this is all about forms uh, remember these are all the different forms that are available and it's up to us how we want to use it in our applications based on our needs uh, we'll do a live example with angular again uh, I'm sure we'll incorporate all of this there but go ahead give it a try start building your own forms uh, remember the best way is to take the forms which are available in the documentation and start growing it from there right uh, never do anything from scratch it doesn't make sense it will demotivate you always take some existing code that's your working motivation and start working and building on top of it I hope uh, it's clear I hope it's fun I'll see you in the next episode where we'll learn about bootstrap drop downs thank you so much for joining in today's episode I'll see you in the next episode thank you